So we just got um, a magazine from Seattle Med. We just got featured um, at mile 86, the Rolling Huts, which is right here. And it says, stay in the prettiest trailers you'll ever see in a large field just off the highway. I like the fact that you see this creative and innovative architect coming in and offering something that you wouldn't normally see in a small community of a thousand people. I was kind of raised in eastern Washington, northern Idaho, and then spent a lot of time in southern uh, southeast British Columbia. That is, frankly, the land of the big landscape. That has a lot to do with how I approach architecture. Thomas Kundig is an architect that designed the huts here on the property. One of the main aspects that he was trying to preserve here on the Rolling Huts property is the peace and calm that the nature provides. He looks at the environment first. It's like an opportunity for him to be more creative and unique. I didn't realize this until a few years ago, how important mountain climbing was for my architecture and is as actually a sort of a source of inspiration because it's not only the landscape, but it's how you engage that landscape. And that clearly is what architecture is about. How do you engage that landscape? And what do you use to engage that landscape? This area has been zoned as a campground for the past 40 years, and they didn't want to change that. So what we did with the cabins is we put them on wheels and we discovered if the building is on wheels, it doesn't need a building permit. So we just went ahead and started building these things. The code authorities all worked up, but when you're in your career, you're going to have to figure out all sorts of ways to, to sort of work and in the spirit of the law. I mean, you don't want to break the law to break the law. That's not, that's not the point at all. But it was pretty clearly strict, sort of unfortunate uh, adherence to the local uh, code and we tried to find a way around it. And there were some people on the, in the city that thought, it, or the county, thought it was funnier than heck and others that didn't think it was that funny. The hut seemed to just appear out of nowhere. I mean, we all looked up and there it was. I couldn't believe that they had managed to put it up there, really almost under the cover of darkness, it seemed like. I was surprised to see where the hut was placed. Any place you build up there is gorgeous, and the view is incredible. So why put your building out where everyone has to look at it you know, this is just stupid. The Meta Valley is, you know, ponderosas, aspens, lots of mountains. For the most part, you can't really see human impact. We've been trying our best for many years to keep structures off the ridgeline. And this was one of the few pieces of property that could actually present an issue for the community. We felt that successive owners should be bound with some covenant that uh, would give protection to those on the valley floor. The covenants on the land read as follows. Visual considerations. Any structures constructed on the property shall be constructed with constraint and consideration in order to minimize the visual impact on all other lands, including lands located on the floor of the Metal Valley and all other lands which have a direct line of sight to the property. It's very, very clear. It's like a wart on the hillside, it's a bump. I mean, it could be the most perfectly designed building in the world. It's still sticking out in everybody's face. You see it from the valley floor. You see it when you go cross-country skiing. It looks like a big cardboard box. And what do you see on, what's on that hill? A house, up there. They knew what they were doing. They um, took this brave move. Well, the brave move backfired. The community has drawn a line in the sand. We're not big on litigious activity, but uh, uh, we didn't ask for this one. It really came to me to start the website and all that because we want to make sure that our feelings are taken seriously as a community. It takes a fair amount of aggravation, I guess, for the community to kind of rise up. But once they do, they get very involved, and that's kind of what's happened here. I personally think the hut should be moved. 
Move that hut, move that hut. If it was just moved, I don't know how many feet, in one direction, they would still have incredible views. The only thing they wouldn't have is the ability to look down on everyone else. I tend to have strong opinions about things. My involvement in this community goes back actually over 40 years. So that really has made me more, you know, focused on Mazama and, uh, you know, trying to protect it. It's hard to accept change. Even subtle changes sometimes are a really big deal for locals because they really want to hold on to tradition, I think. It's just something that you'd kind of have to get used to. Kundig will not be embraced by the community if we're all left looking up at the hut, no. I mean, what is the point in having something like that if the community is going to feel like you're not being a good neighbor? I think it's sad that we can't just sit down and work this out, uh, find some compromise that uh, uh, would please both sides.